मस्क यू वेलकम थैंक यू लोकजन कम कम मन हम नी सब तो शुरू थे साफ सुथरा बसते बुझे ना राइट <laughs> 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 कलिकुजन भाई एंड 
for a very appetizing lecture. As interventional cardiologists, our prime target is open up the arteries. And the two key components that's required, the supporting system and the material actually which opens up the arteries. Among the supporting system, we have already talked about the guide catheters and balloons. Now we are going to talk about the wares. Because to go into a certain place, you need to open up a path. And the, for that, the first thing that you require is to have a very good wire that can actually track you to the desired place. And when you have opened up the artery, you put a scaffold in there for that you require the stands for different type of lesions. Which stand will do well? For the young stars, that's a question. Today, our eminent experts, Dr. Kaisal Nasullah Khan and Prof. Tamji Ahmed, will be answering those questions. And our eminent panelist from our very uh, senior and mentor, Prof. Mamnit Jaman, to the young interventionist like Shajal Aifur Rahman, everybody will be pitching in sharing their experiences and comments. Ladies and gentlemen, let's enjoy the sessions. Thank you. I'm requesting uh, Dr. Kaisal Nasullah Khan, please share your screen and start your talk. Dr. Kaisal Nasullah Khan. Kaisal, but... Uh, I am surprised that Kassel Mato takes a look at your teenage support. Lage. Vadud Bhai. Vadud Bhai. Hello, Bhai. Khan Mongsho to Khan Mongsho ek tu mani tu jo mitari bhab thak bhi pare thi ke kintu korbe na. Sir, sir, ek tu kobi ta chilo. Yehi Khan, Shayi Khan, Shayi Khan. Ena ek tu sir ke unle kore kobi ta chowon chilo. Hello. Hello. Kasa, we can hear you well. Okay, fine. Fine. It too. One cap in the other. Right. The key, bhai. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can you see the slides? Yes. Yes, Kasa, bhai. Okay. Can you hear me loud and clear? Uh, nice, nice to see you. Okay. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all. Really honored uh, to be uh, in this forum to share my uh, lecture. My today's topic is PDCA guidewear, uh, basics and selections of the wear. I have nothing to disclose. Well, gaining knowledge is the first step to wisdom. Sharing it is the first step to humanity. And IPDA is a platform which has given us to share our knowledge and to transfer the legacy to our juniors and next generation to come and learn from each other. So I thank to IPDA from my depth of my heart and also congratulate to legends, Professor Wadud Ahmed Chaudhary, my senior brother, and Dr. Mos uh, and Professor Mohsin Ahmed, my younger brother, to organize this platform and uh, give us chance to learn from all of us. Well, um, I would like to start with some notes to my next generation, whom we look up to. One, trust in God. Two, take chance, dream big with goals daily, monthly, yearly. 
discipline, consistency, work hard, do what you have for others, thank to God what you already have, claim good, and when you reach your goal, pull someone up there to leave your legacy behind. Now, a house can't stand without pillars. A car can't be driven without an engine. Similarly, coronary intervention can't be even thought without guideware. So basics of coronary guideware, no guideware, no intervention. My today's contents of my lecture are one, history. You have to know the history. Game plan, components of guideware, strategic plan for guideware manipulation, classification, wires for different occasions, complications, real life scenario, and lastly, take home message. Let's take one by one. First, history. Well, Grunzing is the first person you all know who started 1977, the coronary angioplasty. And he performed the first coronary angioplasty using a short, non-independently movable guideware. The balloon and the guideware were advanced as a single unit with limited maneuverability. In 1982, Simpson and Roberts reported the use of an independently movable flexible tip guideware. Now, second agenda, game plan. So why guideware? Because it is needed to access or cross the lesion, to reach far end of the vessel, and to provide support for interventional device like balloon, like stents. Now, key characteristic of guideware. One is torque control, two is trackability, three is stability, and four is flexibility. And this slide is very important. While using a guideware, an intervention cardiologist should keep in mind these five points. One, your appropriate strategy selection. Two, you have to know the guideware properties. Third, you have to have optimal imaging by angiogram or CT angiogram or IVAS or OCT. Fourth, support catheter like micro catheter or guide catheter. And lastly, which is the most important, operator hand eye skill. I would like to say that when, when you move your guideware from outside by your hand and eye, when you, see, when you say the guideware tip to go to right, it will go to right. When you say to it go to left, it will go to left. It will abide by your every command. Then you will be skilled on your guideware. If you don't listen to your uh, commands from outside, the inside tip does not behave according to your uh, uh, command, then you are not using maybe the proper guideware or you're not using the proper technique. So operator hand skill, eye skill is very important. Now guideware components. To make it very আমি 
কোটিং Uh, you can see this is from here to here is the central core and this is distal tip weld and over it there is a uh, outer uh, covering then over this outer covering there is a outer coating this is the four components of a guide wear now uh, central core uh, it is the longest and stiffest portion of the guide wear it could be two piece square or one piece core so uh, this is the uh, one piece core you can see the central core extends up to the distal tip weld but this is a two piece core where central core does not accept, extend up to the distal tip there's a gap here and this connection is done by a shaping ribbon now central core material it could of three types one is stainless steel one is dura steel what is nitinol and uh, this is the uh, stainless steel central core and this is a uh, nitinol uh, central core so nitinol central core wires are kink resistant it can be used in multi vessel but stainless steel has got good torqueability but it does not have is not kink resistant and then core diameter sometimes the core diameter gradually tapers and it is smaller but sometimes the core diameter is larger when the larger core diameter then it gives more support when smaller uh, core diameter it gets gives less support but it is more flexible then central core taper sometimes it tapers gradually sometimes it tapers suddenly or shorter tapering so shorter tapering increases large sub, more support but longer taper do give less support but it is better steerable better tracking now second component of the guide wire which is distal tip of the central core it is flexible radio opaque part sometimes there is a spring coil which is 1 to 1.25 cm with a radio opaque selection section located at its terminal end and there is a distal tip weld which is very short less than 2 mm compact cap forming the true distal end of the wear it is cone shaped because it reduces trauma while the wear is traversing the vessels now distal tip styles sometimes what we have said it is from core to tip sometimes it is shaping ribbon where the the core does not reach up to up to the tip then it is connected by some shaping ribbon it is good torqueable the core to tip wires but which has got shaping rib ribbon they are not uh, well torqueable but they are flexible to use now this is very important which is called distal tip uh, another component tip load the last 10 mm of the wear the weight or load scale needed to bend the last 10 mm of the 
uh, tip to two millimeter like this. It is called the tip load of the wear, especially in city wear. We call it one gram, 3.5 gram or nine gram or 12 gram. So last 10 millimeter has to be bent around two millimeter like this. Uh, the weight required for doing this is called a tip load. Then comes next component of guide wear, which is called cover. Cover could be polymer or plastic. It, it provides smoother service for giving the coating, hydrophilic coating. And it increases also lubricity. Next is coating. This coating is done over this cover. And this coating is very important. One is hydrophilic, one is hydrophobic. Hydrophilic means water loving, it is slippery. It goes very smoothly through the um, curved vessels or uh, uh, very narrow channels. And hydrophobics are water repelling or water hating. Usually it is got silicon coating. Uh, it does not go smoothly, but gives very good tactile feelings. You can know where your tip is, especially in the situations. So um, usually hydrophilic coatings are thin slippery and it uh, becomes a gel when wet. And on the contrary, hydrophobic uh, coatings are not uh, slippery. They give good tactile feelings. And when we know the wire become more hydrophilic, it, it becomes slippery or lubricious. And when it, it becomes more hydrophobic or no coating, it gives good tactile feelings. So properties of an ideal guide wear, it should push transmission, it should talk transmission, it, it should give good support, tip support, flexible, tip is durable to use in multiple vessels, tip is visible, tactile feedback, and less prolapse tendency. Now next agenda, the fourth agenda of my talk, strategic plan for guide wear manipulation. You should always see before doing, choosing a guide wear, the anatomy of the lesion, lesion characteristic and device strategy. Like in vessel ang angulation and tortuous uh, vessels, you should take slippery wares. In, in bifurcation lesion, when your uh, wire will be trapped under stand in the side branch, you should, you should not use the slippery wire, you should rather use a uh, non-slippery wire like BMW. And for device, if device is a heavy device, long stand, then you need good support of the wire, then you should take extra support wire. So shaping the wire tip, a bend at the tip of the guide wire allows to be manipulated the most common way of shaping the guide wire is to draw it over the thumb and index finger a, or a guide wire introducer or a needle. And the shape of the distal tip can mimic the takeoff of the vessel or the curve of the artery. So you can see, if you have to enter a large proximal vessel, the curve will be more. But again, if you want to go to a small vessel after crossing the uh, uh, large vessel, suppose a diagonal, or a OM, then you need a small bend like this. This is a small bend and this is large bend. So tips and tricks, avoid excessive rotation of the wire, maintain free movement of the wire tip. Remember free movement, don't push it. It is nothing to push something. Uh, if there's this channel, it will go smoothly. Withdraw or reposition if needed, if wire buckles, avert undue force, then you could draw, change the uh, tip of the wire in another direction and then move forward. Again, important point is optimum guide wire positioning. It should be as distal as possible in the target vessel because it allows extra support when crossing with balloon and stand. Uh, and avert vessel perforation when positioning wire with hydrophilic coating very distally. You have to always watch, keep an eye on the distal tip if, when you're using CTO wear or hydrophilic wares. 
it, it perforates. Now some maneuvers. You can see this is a drilling with trucker. There are certain maneuvers. One is drilling, one is penetrating method to use a where when is uh, you know uh, talk and uh, feedback when you use Gaia wires and sliding method. So let's start with the drilling method with the torquer. Sorry, it's not moving. I think anyway, anyway. Check cross it. Anyway, uh, sorry, maybe it's not moving. Anyway, there is a sliding method. Uh, puncture with torquer and push deflect method when you use Gaia wires. Now oh, the move goes. Let's see. So classification. I'm sorry I could not show the live picture because somewhere computers are working. Anyway, classifications. Uh, we can classify guideware in different pro properties like on flexibility, floppy wear, intermediate wear, stiff wares. Floppy wares are like BMW wear. Intermediate wares we know sometimes we use in situation and stiffer are more tough situations. Situ wares. Tip coating, which I've already described, hydro. Uh, phobic or hydrophilic coating, tip style, one core, two core wares, tip tapering, tapered or untapered wear, uh, core construction, stainless steel or neutral wares, device support, uh, light support, extra support, and target relation type, which I'll, I will describe after some time more vividly. And for specific purpose, like pressure wares, you know, I said about Shona Dachena. I said about Shona Dachena. I said Shunti Bachina. I said about Shona Dachena. Kaiser, I'm the kitchen shunti bachina. Kaiser. Kaiser, we, we, are, we cannot hear anything. Possibly he is also not hearing our sound. Badan bhai, ek two phone ek call kure then. To see, we found what I like. Masin or wife ke phone kore. Kaiser bhai, need one kamusha bhai. Sir, to hospital the I mean, hospital reach for try to reach. Ah, Tanbir. I mean, hospital try to reach. Kaise bhai shunal chala? Kaise bhai? I said, I should not up again. I said, I have to show up to
কাইসার কি শুনতে পাচ্ছেন না শুনতে পাচ্ছেন না কাইসার ভাই শোনা যাচ্ছে না আপনাকে কাইসার ভাই আপনি বেরিয়ে আসেন Best thing is uh, stop is sharing, then you'll know. Vote, stop sharing? Yeah. Yes, sir. We cannot hear you at all. Uh, sir, I'm going to go to the next show. I'm going to go to the next show. I'm going to go to the next show. Have you been able to contact him over there in the hospital? Is there anybody in there who can help us? What's in okay phone for it? আচ্ছা ঠিক আছে তাহলে আমরা কি একটু কারণ বেলুন ওয়ায়ারের পরেই না স্ট্যান্ড আসবে selection like in uh, it, it, it cannot be standardized for everybody yeah okay. uh, my experience is that for any subclusion subtotal occlusion a floppy wire bmw is my choice uh, rarely i use whisper wire when there is a precious vessel uh, in that case i used to use uh, whisper wire um sometime for the support wire আমার ভিডিও মানে কাজ করতেছে আমি দেখি আচ্ছা 
হাইড্রোফোবিক কোটিন উইদাউট হাইড্রোফিলিক কোটিন লাইক লাইক আলটিমেট ব্রোস like miracle group of wires so uh, this is a example uh, of a rco situation um, so you can see that there is a there is a long cto of around 20 mm you can see the distal vessels and auto proximal uh, short uh, uh, tapered cap so this is uh, we are using ultimate bros and you can see we are drilling through the lesion torque and drilling the wire is going here is the wire it is going again and when you give dye from the uh, retrograde channels you can see the wire is in true lumen now it, it is going very fast when it is true lumen it goes very fast so we drilled it the, the whole lesion when you know the course of the vessel very well next is sliding method sliding means you just slide the slide the wires this is usually used by a field xt wire xt uh, r wires or whisper wires just slide just slide you 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 see the channels there is this uh, small micro channels you slide through it very very softly don't push very hard and here is a very angulated lesion angular take off of an om1 you can see uh, this is om1 this is the om1 lesion very tight lesion and angulated and Uh, when we use the bmw wire it is stuck there uh, we can't pass through the lesion then when you use the whisper wire you can see it slides there see uh, it's going the sliding and and then go, moving forwards so this type of angular lesions where lesion is there is small channel you can use slippery wires filter xtr or whisper wires now puncture puncture and sorry push deflect and torque this is for gaia series you have to push and when there is a there is a uh, uh, deflection then you are not in right channel then you just rotate and then again go to the true channel so this you use gaia wires uh, in this technique push deflect and torque so this is another cto in led post cabbage patient so you can see uh, this is the uh, gaia wire you, you just observe the tip push there's a deflection and then there's a you, you see wire is bending and then then you can deflect and push again and if you're in the right channel now it's going it's going 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 and going to true lumen and now it's a true lumen you check by two orthogonal view always in situ cases you should uh, check your situ wire in true orthogonal views because sometimes in one view it, it seems to true lumen but in another view it is out of the vessels and this is tender lesions now classification there are various classifications according to flexibility coating style tapering um so now people get confused which wear to use in which occasions and so many wears in the market with, with so many companies and we really get puzzled and to take decision we simplify the guide wear types into four functions one is workhorse wear another is second is front line fineness wear third is extra support wear fourth is specialty wear workhorse wear is the wear which you will use in 90% of his interventional cases like bmw run through front line fineness wears are those wears when you use in angulated lesion like this tortuous angulated slippery wears whisper pilot extra support wears are those wears when you need support to track your device like here lesion is here uh, downwards here you track your strength through this long 
scarf lesion, sometimes there will be calcific calcium here, then you need extra support, like all star or iron man. And lastly, specialty wear, especially in situ cases, which I'll explain later on. So I've already told walkers wear BMW or run through, frontline fineness, slippery wear, whisper pilot, extra support to track device, iron man, grand slam, or all star. And specialty wears are CTO wears, like Miracle Bros, uh, Mira or, or Ultimate Bros, or you know CrossFit or uh, Gaia. So this is the common workers wear which I use for my 90% of interventions. BMW wears. Some somebody use uh, um, uh, the frontline finest wear for slippery uh, lesions or fine micro channels or tortuous lesion whispers, and filter. Series filter XTR, and then extra support wears for tracking the device like All Star, um, Iron Man, or Grand Slam. Uh, there are different type of support levels, and lastly the specialty wear for CTO. And for this specialty wear, there are four subtypes: guide wear for approaching macro channels, filter XTA, XTR, or XT wears. Guide wear for drilling, which I've already shown, ultimate draws or miracle wears, which are hydrophobic. Guide wear for paint treating, like cross uh, Conquest Pro 9, 12 wear, which are very tapered, very hard wears. And guide wear for retrograde channels, filter XTR wear, Sion wears, or sometimes pilot wears. No complications. Sometimes wire can cause black embolization, arterial dissections, perforation even, but wire perforation is not a serious one. Just pull out the wire, it is okay. Sometimes it go to sub, sub intima and you have to be very careful. You might put the stain in a sub, sub intima as well. Sometimes there could be white fracture or white trip entrapment, especially when you uh, gel the wire, it you wear in a bifurcational lesion, putting a stain in the main vessels. Now let's share with some uh, real life scenario case. Start with a very simple case, case example one, it's example of work wear. So you can see there's a shark lesion, 70 to 80 percent with OM. So always orthogonal view to a certain lesion, this is the very basics. And I took a BMW wear and go very smoothly, smoothly down. Then you can see um, the wire tip is now getting some resistance. So orthogonal view and, and took a picture to see where is the vessel, where it's stuck in a small vessel. So when there is a stuck, then just pull out the wire and make the tip free, rotate upwards and then go to the main vessel gradually like this. So whenever the wire is stuck, no, never push a force. If you push force, there will be dissections. So if there is wire tip is buckling, pull out the wire, rotate the wire tip in another direction, and gently move forward. Then confirm the distal tip position by taking some dye. Then balloon, stand. And this is the final picture. So I as I've given in the case example one, the basic workhorse wear, a BMW wear, very straightforward case. Next, frontline fineness wear example and specialty wear example, CTO wears. Now this is a RCA 99 to 100% lesion showing some bridging collateral, looks like Capot Medusa of Greek goddess. But seems to me there is a, some micro channel. And the same patient, this is a double CTO, this is a blunt stump of the LED proximal with a diagonal branch. And CTO length is around 30 millimeter. We can see the distal uh, LED by ipsilateral collateral. So always you have to take orthogonal views, different views to ascertain the relations. Now started with the, uh, the RCCTO, there seems to be a macro channel. So I took different view to see the which channel I should probe. 
Then to fill the extra wear, just slide it and it goes very smoothly with microcatheter support. And then balloon it with small and large balloon, then stand, and you can see the final picture. So this is the example of a sliding method through filter STR wear. Now this, I took retrograde uh, shot by a diagnostic JR and XB uh, through uh, left channels. And again, contralateral views, orthogonal views to ascertain lesions, both by bilateral injections, and now first probe the proximal cap with the filter XT wear, but cap was very hard, it's not going. Then took a Concrete Pro 9 wear through microcatheter support, but unfortunately it went to a false channel. So again, pull the wear out and try to get the true lumen, but unfortunately again went to false lumen. You can see where is out of the lumen. So kept the uh, Concrete Pro 9 wear there and take second Concrete Pro 12 wear. Now this is called parallel technique. You can see there are two wears. So first wear giving you a direction where to go. And then with the second wear, I reached up to the distal lumen. But still I did not puncture it. Waited for some moment, take orthogonal view. And then when I'm sure I am just uh, in the true lumen, I pushed the wear, punctured it. Then uh, put a wire in the diagonal because it's big diagonal, ballooned it, then ballooned the main branch, put two strands up to already osteal, and this is the final picture. So these are two CTOs in one patient, giving example of frontal and fineness wear and CTO or specialty wires. So this is a picture after two years of these lesions. Now, case three. Sometimes you have to very fast in wearing, especially in case of emergency or primary PCI. This is the case, Mr. X, 76 years old, diabetic, hypertensive, sudden onset of shortness of breath, sweating. Um, uh, for 20 minutes, pulse was 38, pressure was low, bilateral basal crepes, ECG ST up in one AVL V1 to V6, Diagnosis, AMI, extensive anterior, cardiogenic shock, LVF. First shot, you can see all things are closed. Sar closed, LED closed, just left me, I can show him. And in the next step, the patient went to arrest. So CPR started. In the CPR, I passed the wear and ballooned the lesion to restore blood flow. And you have to understand, those one minute, if this is within one minute, if you don't... Uh, 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 keep the uh, blood flow in the heart, it can, patient will die. Sorry. So here we are doing CPR and while doing CPR, where the vessel, balloon it, restore blood flow. And in the next case, you can see now heart is pumping and I put a TPM. And next, put a stent very fast. And this was the last picture with all iron drop support. So take home message. It's important to understand design and construction of guide wares. Performance and handling characteristics are influenced by guide wire construction and design. Coronary anatomy, lesion morphology, and lesion location should be considered when selecting an appropriate guide wire. You can't always get what you want, but if you try something well enough, you might find you get what you need. So always try to find your own few workhorse wear for different situation. I think three or four wears. Like one workhorse wear, like BMW or run through, one frontal and fineness wear, whisper pilot, or some CTO wears. 
and one extra support pair like All Star. So I love this quotation of Judkins, who invented the guide catheters. The wire is placed across the atherometer's block more by application and judgment rather than of force. Let's uh, try to fly the uh, kite of intervention with smooth handling of wires. Thank you for patience hearing. I'm sorry that my, my sometimes my slide is not working. I'm very sorry. Uh, thank you. So, Kaiser Sulokan, right? Uh, excellent presentation. Oh, we just uh, list the your uh, synchronous presentation by the technical technical difficulties. Uh, I'm requesting Dr. Monjur. Dr. Monjur, uh, you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I, we, I can Monjur? hear you. Yeah, you yes, uh, you repeat your question to the Kaiser Bhai or any faculties. Any question? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, sir. Uh, actually, uh, to the to Kaiser, sir, I have a one question. Uh, during CTO, sir, is there any uh, particular choice uh, according to the uh, plug morphology, whether it is blunt or convex con concavity, sir? Uh, would you please say something regarding this thing? Uh, yes. Uh, Monjur, thank you so much uh, for a nice question. Uh, when you start a CTO, you have to see the, whether the cap is tapered or blunt. If it's tapered, there could be some micro channel. should probe it with some filter XT wires. You might find some micro channel if you're lucky. If not, you can go with some drilling wire like uh, Miracle or Ultimate Bros. But if the cap is blunt, then usually it is very hard plug. Then you need a penetrating wire like Conquest Pro 9 or 12 because you need force to penetrate a distal, uh, proximal or distal cap. So definitely with plug uh, characteristic morphology, you have to select your CTO wires. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Manjur. Dr. Aziz Roman, Roman. Dr. Aziz Roman, Roman, do you hear me? Can I add something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, for a blunt cap, you have to just hook the middle of the lesion. So if you need from the very beginning, a hardware that can be treated. Like CTU wire, as you were saying, you have to drill it. But when there is a tapered end, you just have a very good look at the angiogram. You will find there may be some channel going through. And then you can use the slippery wire. Pilot, filter XT, these are all good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your nice presentation. Sir, uh, in case of bifurcation lesion, in five uh, side branch, which are you favor, sir? Uh, well, well uh, uh, for side branch, I usually use Roman, a uh, like non hydrophilic wear, like BMW wear and a N wear, new wear, because if the wear you gel by stands, if sometimes you use it you wear, then sometimes it you might get stuck. So don't use hydrophilic wear. Always use a not hydrophilic wear and try to use a new wear, not an it you wear for side branch. Uh, I, I would add, like to add something because the hydrophilic coating, if you gel it and if you find you are uh, trying to pull it out, then that coating material may get remain in the uh, side branch and that will re lead to early re -stenosis. Thank you, sir. Hello? Uh, in this connection, I want to... Uh, 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 more, uh, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Study, uh, there was a study yes. done in... Uh, uh, okay, they have shown uh, even if you use a hydrophilic wire, uh, nothing happened. Actually, we practice not to use hydrophilic wire, but this study was specifically done to 
see the effect of using a hydrophilic wire in the side bar. They have shown there is no difference. So maybe they, they are true. But there is standard practice is what you said, they use a new wire and, and non coated wire. This is a common practice. Thank you, sir. Nice Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Shudaka Shalgar, do you hear me? I want to add another thing. Please, always be sure the distal end, the, uh, the opaque part is not trapped. If it is trapped, you are doomed because it will, the wire will off and it will remain in the side branch. Thank you, sir. Dr. Sumit, uh, Dr. Sumit Baudil, Nepal, Dr. Sumit. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for the nice presentation. I was a little bit late uh, in today's presentation, and I will uh, uh, see the presentation in YouTube. Uh, thank you very much. I have, uh, actually, I have no question to go. Thank you. Then I will go to the faculties. Uh, Dr. Arun Maski, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, please. Any yeah. question uh, or comment? So, yeah. well, one co common thing, uh, good wow. presentation. So, Kaisalbhai, sometimes you trap your wire. So, most of the time, we are not using new wires. But sometimes, if you're using old wires, you get wind deploying stents, you get trapped. So, what would be your tricks and tricks? Because I had one similar case. So, it was very difficulty. So what would be your trips and tricks if the Y is trapped, especially if you're doing a uh, wife patient lesions? Yeah, uh, thank you, Maski, for your nice question. Uh, well, it ha it might happen in your life as well. Uh, so what uh, when I do, it happened once or twice in my life as well. Um, sometimes you you have to use it your words uh, because of the economic constraints. So you have to use a very small balloon like 1.25 uh, and take it up to as much as possible. Then with the support of the balloon, you have to pull out the wire. And, and sometimes if necessary, you can take the balloon and you, you can dial it a bit because you are keeping a wire in the main branch. So you can take the balloon a bit uh, below the stand and you know, you can inflate it for atmosphere to keep, create a space and pull out the wire. And then again, with the main branch wire, you can uh, uh, expand the um, stand with good post dilation in high pressure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samsonor, sir. Dr. Samsonor, sir, do you hear me? Uh, I, hear I want to add something. Yes. Oh, well, nothing much to add. Kasar, thank you very much. Although there is an interruption, but it was really enjoyable. I just uh, want to add something for the uh, fellows because most of the time you use actually old used wire. If you keep in mind that used or old wire, they don't behave like new wire. The geography, course, everything actually alters. It all comes with experience, actually. It's nothing much. It, uh, don't discourage it. But the beginning, try to use the new wire. When you get experience, then start using the old wire. And as Kaisal pointed out, when you do the bifurcation, try to give a new wire in the side branch. If you get trapped, it will be easy to take it out. And use the older wire in the main vessel. That will save your expenses. Thank you very much. Uh, Samson, I have mean, one question to you, sir. Samson, yeah. yes. for the support support of the wire, sometimes using of the wire for supporting, that is uh, crossing the KC ventilation, crossing the stent through the KC ventilation. How will you use the uh, wire to cross the stent to the KC ventilation, using of the wire? Well, actually, it is a very difficult. Sometimes we face almost uh, time to time we face this problem. I What I usually do if it's for uh, the wire the, after proper dilatation, pre dilation the stand doesn't cross. I need to take a second support catheter, uh, like Godzilla, that's my favorite thing. I take a Godzilla deep inside the, the, uh, the artery, and with the Godzilla, with the wire, I don't have to change the wire at all. Stand goes much easily. Very useful thing, Godzilla. Every catheter should have one of these. But, but it, it is not possible for every catheter, because junior faculties, uh, fellows are doing, they are now uh, using the Godzilla. So I think, <laughs> Should no, use no, no. the no, no. I said comments, uh, sir. Use the wire, the polyester wire is a support wire. Sometimes, polyester wire. Suppose, suppose if you anticipate the problem will be there, you know, you can use the support wire in advance. 
That was you are already inside. You have done pre-digestion. Is really you can't take the support wire out. The wire out and put it into support wire. They put the wire, wire, body body wire. If you if you know if you know if you know the calcified artery is is going to give a problem well in advance, then you take the support, extra support wire. That will give you heavier wire. Will give you support to the balloon. Or if necessary, you can put a uh, body wire. Body wire. Body wire yes. will help you to slide the slide the stent. Uh, Thank you, sir. I, I Thank agree you. with uh, Shams. Like a, uh, a, your uh, bra uh, uh, to cover stent, you should have. Sir, your sound is so low, sir. Sound. Sir, your sound is not clear, sir. Oh, sorry. Uh, like a cover stent, you should have a Godzilla in your lab. It is not a luxury. It is the necessities. Even even with the wire, support wire is more expensive. If you because wire you can use only one or twice. Godzilla, you can use, I, 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 I say, not less than 10 times. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. cost wise, cost wise, it is not that expensive. Sometimes it will yeah, unnecessarily will save, will save you a lot of trouble, actually. A lot of trouble. Godzilla is not luxury, it is essential, yes. like your cover stand. And another thing is machine. Whenever you are dealing with the calcified lesion, please pre dilate adequately and please pre dilate with adequate size balloon. Don't be dilated with 1.5 balloon and then be happy with it. Go for 2 or 2.5 balloon, one to one ratio, then you can easily put a stent in there. Yes. Uh, but here the, for the fellows, uh, choosing of the wire, not only crossing the lesion, also seeing the plaques morphology, most important for the integrate. Uh, and integrate uh, that is adulation, not retrograde. Your comments, I said. This is on the wire. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 Doctor Mohsen, uh, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, what I have shown that the game plan. When I, I always teach my fellows that, you know, when you are in the intervention, uh, then you can't decide before intervention. You plan by seeing the angiogram in different views. So plaque map morphology, location of the uh, um, money. Lesions, the, the proximal part of the vessel before the lesion, these all things you have to plan ahead. And you have to have plan A, plan B, plan C. Like what you have raised now, raised now that there's a difficult lesion, calcified lesion, you, you know there might be a problem. So what Bodhubai said, while we pass the wire, we should take a good extra support wire, like All Star or you know, Iron Man, uh, if necessary, by passing a normal wear, we'll take microcatheter and change it with a extra support wear. Then what Vadul Bhai said that we should dilate it properly. But what I do that I dilate the lesion, the side of the stent. Normally I dilate 2.52, but in, in, in calcified lesions, I dilate the actual size of the vessel. That is one to one ratio, three, three billion for three, three, three uh, uh, vessels. Thirdly, what we have said, if you can't take the device, then we have to take a body wear. If body wear fails, then what I do sometimes, I take anchor balloon. I put a wire in a, in a side branch, approximately, to, uh, take a small balloon like 2, 2.5, 10, 15, inflate it, then I, I take the force and take the device down. And what all say, like Momodama says, told that you can also keep in Godzilla. So plan A, body wear, uh, uh, all star wear, example wear, plan B, body wear, plan C, uh, 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 balloon balloon. Uh, that is uh, uh, anchor balloon plan D, you know, Garcilla. So you've got different plans. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. The professor, Dr. Sadhu Raman, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whatever he has is seeing a dissect. Uh, and so the dissected way, you, you cannot be always sure you are going in the two lumen. And what wire we will be choosing then? Sadhu, will you be answering that? Side is, side is yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, just for where I just usually tell that I, you have to for all my fellows I used to tell you have to love the where most because this this is the thing that uh, uh, you, you have to know how to drive it very well because this is really really very much important if you can't wear or if you have difficulties in wearing initially then then all the pci procedure will be a very much uh, a, a great burden for you and so that's why even for a simple lesion in you will have to feel the wear first which i have learned abroad the first thing my mentor has given me a wear a guide wear 
I have taken it in the bus, and all the time I was feeling the wear by my two index and my my big finger within these two things. This tactile response is very important. And sincerely speaking, uh, for me, for the, as I, I want to feel well, I never use a torqueur in my any type of PCI because I can feel very well. And the, what is what, uh, what Ray is telling me, if it is going into the dissected segment, then you can feel it from outside by your finger that it's not really going well. So, so you have to pull the wire because even without seeing that one, you can feel that one. So you have to feel the wear very much. And for a dissection, if you if you are going to a like especially in CTO cases, whenever in anterior wire escalation techniques, you may go in a different way, in the subintima or somewhere else, or maybe you may, you may perforate the vessel, but you can feel it. Some of the wares, like 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 nowadays, the Gaia wear, I like this Gaia family very much. The Gaia first wear, I will tell the fellows that you can start also with this one. And you, if you, you will really, uh, you, you can feel this guy first wear, especially initially, and uh, and and you have to know how to rotate it because the guy first wear has a tip, very small, one millimeter deflected part. You say that part is the beauty, and that part is verification. I can tell that. Is yes, you have to take a new wear in the side branch and the old wear or Oxford wear in the main branch. But sometimes I take a healthier Oxford wear in the side branch, relatively healthy, I can tell, seeing all the, the things that the, the guide wear is not that much bad in shape. Because whenever you, are, you will have to recross, you will have to rewear the side branch, you have to take the main branch wear. So that main branch wire, because that one is the difficult most part to rewire the side branch through the stand start. So it's better to have a very good wire in the main branch because you'll pull that wire and you'll put it in the side branch after standing. So that's that's I can tell so far. Thank the you. Thank you. Khalid Mosin. Khalid Mosin. Sir, Khalid Mosin, sir. Thank you. Thank you, okay, sir, for a very nice and elaborate presentation. Actually, uh, we don't have the luxury of using the new wares all the time, but the feeling of the new So when we uh, re-sterilize a wear, we have to be aware that the tip uh, flexibility changes. And the Oxford wares, even it is a workhorse wear, is likely to cause distal tip perforation. So we have to keep that in mind. And when we're, uh, as Kaisar has said, they put the wear as distally as follows, but uh, we should avoid keeping the wear in a small <coughs> branches are likely to perforate. And I uh, just want to uh, advise the fellows that a, a proximal perforation is relatively easier than a distal tip perforation. It is, uh, we have to keep that in mind. And another thing, when we cross a lesion with a stiffer wear, we should uh, must uh, not forget to exchange it over a microcatheter to a softer wear later on. So we should not be keeping a hardware in the uh, vessel for a very long time. And uh, Kaisar has uh, classified the wares very nicely, but I think uh, the two things needs to be mentioned. One is the rota wear uh, for the atherectomy, rotational atherectomy, these are different type of wear, and it is very difficult to manipulate as well. And another is a viper wear for the orbital atherectomy. These are the two specialty wears, uh, which uh, uh, needs a special mention. So we uh, must be able to handle the side. That is the most important tool of the intervention, apart from uh, anything, anything, uh, nothing, compared to the wear. Actually, the wear, the success of intervention depends on the wear manipulation and the wear crossing of the lesion. So we have to be very careful. And it has to be learned very meticulously. Uh, thank you, Kaisar, once again, for your uh, nice presentation. Uh, and uh, we are going to hear uh, uh, the lecture of Professor Tamjid very soon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Dr. Shubro, I have a question. Dr. Shubro, do you hear me? Dr. Shubro? Yes, sir. Uh, you, uh, please. 
thank you sir for giving me the opportunity i have got a question uh, already partly answered by sajur mishra sir uh, the, my question is uh, in complex procedure where uh, exchange of wires are needed like recrossing several times is there any specific uh, uh, direction to any wire where it will be easier to cross or recross in complex procedures like uh, dk crash or uh, like uh, multi bus stentings etc Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in Stand any complex, uh, yeah. money. What? What? My, my message to all is that choose your workhorse wear, and that workhorse wear will serve you to do your ninety to ninety-five percent of cases. So, in dicky crash or any bifurcation lesion, you can use normal BMW wear, which I use as my workhorse wear. And usually, uh, sometimes you know, uh, while you recross a a a a, a skin star, uh, you have to know how to take it uh, not under the skin but inside the skin. So what I do sometimes, I make a fold. You know, fold can't go into the under underneath the skin. So by making a small fold, I take it inside the skin. Then I cross. in the side branch for doing the kissing balloon or final kissing balloon so this is one technique and the second technique is that you can take a special type of uh, 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 catheter which is got two lumens so one lumen you can uh, keep in the uh, main artery and through the same catheter you can take another wire to reach the distal vessel and then rewire the side branch like cruset the, the catheter name is cruset Uh, it is Kanuka company, Japanese company. Yeah. So, for any complex lesions, uh, what I have I have classified the wires into four types: workers' wear, frontline fineness, extra support wires, and you know specialty wire, CTO wires. So, you have to know three or four wires, and that will serve your purpose for ninety-nine percent of cases. One percent of cases, you might need some special wire. Like in my lifetime, I have used one to. Uh, puncture the distal cap, Concus Pro A20, once in in my lifetime. Yeah, I, you, uh, can you. I add? Can I add, Mohsen? Yes, sorry. Yeah, I refer to Dr. Shubro because because Sir, these are the wires. Uh, yeah, the, the lots of wires you can uh, you you have lots of wires and you have according to specialty you will have to remember the wire and it will be you know it will be like that your 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 brain will be spinning uh, so it's better to that because whenever you are especially for bifurcation for the crash or uh, or in cap cases sometimes it's really hard to cross the stand or it's really hard at that time you are very much disparate but it's not going anything so don't i, I usually think in that way that a small a thin hydrophilic wire is enough to cross the things it's be, better to use that one because and uh, you have to cross you have to cross that and you have to go to the side branch so i have to feel it where is a slippery serpentine like motion so usually you can go there and after going there then you will treat the lesion with smaller to the balloon or other things so whatever it is to make the hole there so i think that is the simple one because if you remember so many wires then it's really hard that which one you will take uh, thank you thank you kasabai uh, yes sorry go to the next uh, topics then come back to our our honor uh, faculties lots of faculties here i will uh, you just pardon dr tamjid bhai dr tamjid ji mr tamjid ji yes i can hear of course you are going to talk i think okay. design and how you stands and there is some fire we get baba While Tamjid Bhai is reading his lecture, I will draw one thing uh, to everyone's attention. Because you are using multiple wire, you should remember to keep them separate. Do not entwine them. If you entangle them, you are in trouble. You always remember that. Always keep the left one to the left, just the right one to the right. Use small uh, napkins or small uh, towels. 
to keep them separate. Yeah, case. Vadu, Vadu, bhai, in bifurcation, this is the common <laughs> term. Wire wrap. You are not yourself. Don't wrap the wire. Don't wrap okay. the wire. Okay, Tamjid, bhai, you start your session. Uh, can you see? see yes, the... yes. Okay, Assalamu alaikum and good evening, distinguished uh, audience. Uh -huh. I'm Tamjid Ahmed, uh, working at Evercare Hospital, known to be uh, a yeah. hospital before. Uh, this presentation partly was prepared by me, but mostly by Dr. Farana. So it's a Ahmed Ahmed production. You have to start sharing. Okay. 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 Are you, did, okay. Can't you see anything? No. I'm sorry. I have to go back then. All right. Start okay. sharing. Then start. Okay. Let me go to the. All right. I have to go back. Your sharing screen, you do not see anybody. Okay, yes, I'm trying to, but I can't see myself actually. Can you see anything? No, no, only I see you. Okay, up to ten. Kore again, minimize Kore again. Up to date, minimize Kore. I mean, okay, I couldn't tap it. share screen at Jan. Let me open. Would open Kore again, minimize Kore. Lecture. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Professor Amal Kumar Chaudhary, do you hear me? Amal Kumar? Yeah. Amal Kumar? Please unmute yourself. Amal Kumar, unmute Karen. Unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Mohsin and Wadud, for giving me opportunity. I share the Wadud uh, uh, comment. Yesterday, uh, we did a decay crash step by step. Uh, Shurpura was there uh, to avoid the um, uh, Saidur's uh, Rahman's uh, comment that's a war wrap. Uh, there is two colors should be choose. It is very, very comfortable. Color of the body, color of the body should be different. Uh, particularly, Ranthro, or it is green, and Renato is black. So, if we keep the, that, this is in PLB, this is in PDA. So, once if it is changed, sometimes the PLB are changed to PDA and PDA are sometimes sent to PLB. So color is one of the, we can use the two color also, one of the tips to avoid wire wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tamjit bhai, we are uh, serious. Okay, Tamjit. Slide it, slide it. 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 Can you hear me well? Okay, thank you. Sorry for the delay. Uh, my subject is selection of strength. Huh? My name is Samjid Ahmed. Uh, I'm working at Evercare Hospital, which was known as uh, Apple Hospital before. My presentation was thankfully prepared by, mostly prepared by Dr. Farhana Ahmed uh, of NICVD. And I actually introduced some of my cases, of course. Uh, I have no financial disclosures, particularly with any strength companies. My contents of my presentations include evaluation of strength, basic structure of strength, commercially available strength, tip and tricks of strength selection. So let's start from when did the first strength happen? It was a Pamasha strength, uh, first deployed by Eduardo Sauso in Brazil, 1997. Then of course, two major randomized study was conducted comparing uh, pendulonangioplasty to uh, palmaster stent, it was found that there was about 30% reduction in the stenosis in stented patients compared to plain balloon angioplasty. Also, there was significant reduction in TLR, that is uh, target lesion revascularization and MACE, uh, major adverse cardiac events, among patients who had uh, stent implanted. 
So Palmer stent, Palmer stress stent was the first stent approved by US FDA and it was introduced in 1994. That's the beginning of the stent, journey of stent. Now stent backbone, the bare metal is a metallic thing. So bare metal stent is a beginner of the stent. So first stent was a stainless steel stent. It, uh, it was excellent mechanical properties and co corrosion resistance. It had adequate radial strength to scaffold the vessel and prevent recoil. However, it compromised and, uh, with some deliberate and resistance rate was still high. Then came cobalt chromium strength, which, are, uh, which had better radio opacity and radial strength. It had thinner struts, improved flexibility, increased the inner diameter of the strength, reduced the amount of vascular injury, clinically decreased stenosis and improved deliverability. And then can of course uh, platinum chromium, which is more opaque uh, on fluoroscopy and uh, other properties are similar to cobalt chromium. So bare metal stent has some disadvantage, still has some disadvantage. There was still this, uh, about 30% stenosis. Then came the drug eluting stents. This stent actually had a, uh, a platform like bare metal stent, uh, a backbone, polymer coating and drug. The first generation of uh, drug eluting stents were Cypher, Texas. Uh, they used stainless steels and their diameter, start diameters were quite high. You can see one, 0 0.14 micromore a meter, 0 0.132. Gradually with the second generation drug eluting stents were cobalt alloy stents. They were actually um, uh, diameter by strut diameter was reduced to 0 0.96 micrometer to 0 0.91 and 0 0.81. Then came the third generation, that is promos element. Uh, those are actually 0 0.81 micrometer. And finally, the synergy is a thinner one, of course, thinnest one, one of the thinnest one. And uh, that has a, a strut diameter of 0 0.04 micrometer with increasing de deliverability of the stents. So these are the strain generations among the drug eluting stents. Now coming to the strain structure. The structure of this, this metallic things had a, a closed cell design and open cell design. The initial stents were most, mostly closed cells with the increased radial strength. Uh, it had an increased metal load, more uniform drug release, of course, and decreased tissue plus with closed stent stents. As you can see from the picture, closed stents are interconnected. Whereas open cells are open, there's some areas are open, there's no interconnections between the struts. And there's another type is hybrid cells design, which is actually a combination of both open and uh, uh, closed cells stent structure. And open cell design actually was more, uh, we became more space between struts, it is more flexible, it had more side branch access and more tissue prolapse. The first, uh, Open cell stent was multilingual vision by about. And you can see the designs of the stent uh, of, uh, close, of closed cell design, BX velocity, actually, which later became cipher, of course. BX velocity, bare metal stent was a closed cell stent. And then, of course, vision, which became Giants, Liberty, I think, uh, yeah, Texas. Driver became it, in, in Endeavors and later Resolutes and Express. So the generation kept happening with the bare metal stent and the, the Mostly nowadays are open cell design stents. This non, uh, newer generation drug eluting stents, they have all open cell design. As you can see, there's a gap in Giant Sierra, Resolutonics, Synergy, Orsido, Ultima, Cetera, Biofreedom. All this, actually, I can see the designs, they're open cell designs. Now, besides uh, start, uh, start uh, now the polymer. Polymer is actually meant to release drugs and modulate the evolution of drugs into the arterial tissue. As you can see from the picture, there's a level of polymer drug and the scaffold. But this polymer later found to have linked to the more inflammation and early neoatherosclerosis, with, particularly with drug eluting stent. So therefore later they developed a polymer, uh, biodegradable polymer stents like Synergy, Biometrix, Nobody, Ultimaster, they actually but had biodegradable polymers. Also, there was a polymer-free drug what is stent, like biofreedom. Unfortunately, we don't have it in our country, but it is totally polymer-free stent. And there are newer, some strains like endothelial progenital cell technology stent. This stainless steel starts actually has an abnormal coating of cytolemus with biodegradable polymer, 
uh, polymer matrix and luminal coating with antibodies to endothelial progenitor cells in this early endothelialization. Now, we started our journey with a bare metal stent, which had higher ISR rate, and then uh, higher, to, higher to raise a drug eluting stent, but much better than balloon angioplasty, of course. Uh, then came the drug eluting stent in 2002, uh, with the euphoria of cipher and rival trial, which showed 0% restenosis, but of course later it found to be at least 0.5% restenosis. The first generation drug eluting stents, PES and uh, that is platysal eluting stent and cerebellus eluting stents, and uh, they later in 2006 had some issues of uh, stem thrombosis. And they, later it was found to be more due to polymer hypersensitivity, which, which improved in second generation drug eluting stent, like Everolimus eluting stent and Jotodilemus eluting stent, that thinners and bicompatible polymer with very low late stem thrombosis rates. Then, of course, after second generation, newer generation devices are coming up. We actually came with, even with a bioabsorbable, total bioabsorbable scaffold, but absorb. But some technical issues, it has been withdrawn now. Uh, also, we have a biodegradable polymer uh, drug editing stents like Biometrix, Nobori, Ultimaster, Orsido, Synergy. And of course, we have, uh, uh, there are polymer free drug coated stents, but not available in our country, Biofreedom and EPC technology combo stent. This is basically causes earlier endothelialization and can shorten the DAPT use, particularly patient going for any surgery, you need to stop the anticoagulation, uh, antiplatelet drugs, then this is the stent sometimes we use. And therapeutic agent, when we started with the first generation drug eluting stents, it was Cypher and the drug was Cerulimus. And uh, at Texas, the drug was so these were the leading first generation drug eluting stents. Then came the second generation drug eluting stents. I'm talking of, about FDA approved stents only here. Uh, those are Giants V Promas, Promas element stents. They started using Everolimus as their drugs and polymer as PBMA compared to PBA before. And they showed some improvement in further improvement in the design and strength, uh, lessen strength thrombosis. And of course, uh, 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 Resolute and Endeavor, they use Jotaralimus drug. Now, overview of the current stand design, as you can see here, uh, newer generation strands like uh, Giants, Resolute, Biometrics, Ultimaster, Synergy, and Orsido. Of these, uh, Giants, Promos, and Resolute actually are durable polymer coated stands, whereas uh, Biosensor, uh, Ultimaster, Synergy, Orsido, they have bioabsorbable polymer coat that the, the polymer gets absorbed in one uh, in three months time. And the design actually can see circumferential in case of a uh, durable polymer in a uh, uh, board stents and metronic stents uh, resolute, but uh, in biosensor, it's, it's an, only on the abdominal surface, these uh, uh, polymers are available uh, only in abdominal surface and ultimate synergy or site and biometric stents. And also, there's a decrease in strain structure to 81. In case of Giants, is 81 micrometer. Resolute has 91 micrometer. Bison's is thick, slightly thicker, 120 micrometer. Uh, Ultimaster is only 80 micrometer. Synergy is 74 micrometer. And Orsite is very thin, 64, 60 micrometer. But it is a circumferential, whereas these are on the, only on the abdominal sides, polymers. Now, some issues. With stent placement, uh, particularly for the fellows, we need to know the stents, some pros and cons of the stents. Uh, newer days are able to expand largely beyond the nominal diameter. Overexpansion not only increases the MLD and MSA, but also increases the cell size and also the straight, straightening of the strut. Uh, indeed, approaching physical limit of the stent induces change in mechanical stiffness and drug delivery. Therefore, the performance device can be completely altered. In mainstream drug eluting stand perform, platform, only large size design like Synergy, Promos Element, uh, Onyx, they have five sizes as well. And Texas also have five sizes, which has been labeled for post expansion below, beyond five millimeter. It's more important with the left main stands. Now, element of stand design, longitudinal stand uh, deformation. Uh, it happens particularly with the 
It happens in all kinds of stain design, but the promos cell has has a relatively low, high occurrence of longitudinal stain deformation. It, it is designed with stain thrusts and fewer connectors are believed to be prone to LSD. On the other hand, it's relative high radio opacity and also provides easier recognition of uh, longitudinal stain deformation. Now, balloon overhang. Earlier generation stent actually had a, a, a significant balloon overhang, like Cypher, they had 1.61 millimeter and they were 1.38 uh, with a decrement to Giants to 0.95, Texas 0.89, Texas 0.88. So with minimal uh, balloon overhanging, this is to help to minimize vessel trauma or damage outside the stent. And the current drug eluting stent options we have, Abbott Vascular, we have Giants V, Giants Nano, Giants Prime, Giants Expedition, Giants Al Alpine. They, they use every drug and they have durable polymers and the size actually 2.25 to 4, 4 millimeter. The length actually from eight millimeter to 48, not 38, 48 millimeter, particularly Expedition and Alpine. Boston Scientific has Promos Element, Promos Premier and Synergy. Uh, except Ion is a practical, almost mostly are on Avril Levin's drug. And they have du uh, durable, durable polymer except in Synergy, which is bioabsorbable polymer. And the size actually ranges from 2.25 to four millimeter and uh, length from eight millimeter to uh, 38, except for Synergy, which can go up to 48, which is available up to 48 millimeter. Ametronic and Resolute Integrity, they use the drug Jordana Limas. It uses a durable polymer. The stent sizes are available from 2.25 to four millimeter and the length uh, up to 38 millimeter. And Giants family stents, you can see that the Giants Expedition, Abbott Vascular, these are approved, FDA approved stents. Uh, they use Evrolimus drug, they form hybrid. This is a hybrid cell design. This is combination of open and closed cell design actually for the strength struct. And they use poly, uh, polymer PBMA, which is a superior uh, polymer. Giants V, Giants Prime, uh, some second, some improvement in the strength structure. Other strengths like Promos Element strength from Boston Scientific uh, use uh, Evrolimus. They have platinum chromium uh, base which is uh, more radio opaque. And uh, they, they, thin, uh, they th use also thin fibrin copolymer, which is very much a uh, 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 resistant to strength thrombosis. Now, desirable strength characteristics are, are low crossing profile, high flexibility, high radial strength, low metallic area, surface area, area favorable radiographic opacity pro properties during fluoroscopy, good trackability and easy deployment. Now, tips and tricks of strain selection. BMS. Amjit, Shonajat, Chena. Nice elaborate presentation, but technical support. Just one minute, Tamjit is coming. Tamjit, please say the quote for me. Yes, I am asking. Yes, I am asking. Monjan, please ask a question. Monjan, please. 
Hello. John Five. Uh, what type of stent will you choose when you are doing a left main stenting? Ekhano wireer moto actually our limitations ekhano achhe. We don't have a lot number of uh, stent in our shelf. Usually, commonly, our uh, hospital got to I mean, any CBD issue jokta achhe because all the company guys are uh, uh, having their stent in their bag around Catlin. But in our place, they fixed three, four, five, maximum five types of stent. According to our choice, we keep uh, the stent available in our shelf. Uh, commonly, nowadays, most of the stent is of good quality with good radial strength and also uh, good visual uh, impression about this stent, both fluoroscopy and also by uh, the machinery support like stent boost and all other things. So, Specifically, I'm not that keen to use a particular stain for left main. All I need, it should be very much visible so that if I want to cover up to the ostium, I can exactly put the ostium. Uh, or it can match the vessel. Say, for example, left main, if it is a four millimeter vessel, it is not wise to use a 2.75 stain yes. uh, uh, in left main, uh, matching the distal end. Because always you are choosing the stain size with the distal measurement. But if it's the proximal end, especially the left main, sometimes it is 4.5. You need to expand post dilate with the bigger size balloon. So the stain design nowadays, most of them like uh, Medonic and also Boston, all the stain has got that open cell character, well, radio visual, well visualized. And it is a selection, my selection, if you want to cover the left main, never take any stain less than three millimeter. At least if you want, you can upsize it to four millimeter. But if you can, if you take 2.75, if you expand with the four millimeter, then you'll see by stain boost, the stain is deformed. So uh, it, uh, my choice is to take it at least three, not less than three. I prefer to take 3.5, just dilate it less than nominal pressure. Just expand it, then pull it, go to high pressure, then take a higher size balloon to avoid the distal edge dissection. And if you take 3.5 for the left main, this is my choice. Thank you, sir. Dr. I think, Tamjid, I think one more thing, one more thing related uh, to Tamjid, is he online? Dr. Tamjid, bhai, do you hear me? Dr. Tamjid? Assalamualaikum. Sorry, I was disconnected. Yeah, okay. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. 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 Okay, thank you. you. Yes, sir. Uh, no morning, sir. Can you finish? Uh, I think you're still continuing. Please continue. I can join Please later. No problem. No, no, you, you join. Okay. We join. Yeah, we can start for your lecture. Uh, well, it's a fantastic okay. one. It's a fantastic one. So let's just start again. Yeah. Skin Sorry share. for the interruption. It's resume uh, share. Huh? Double click your full screen. Okay. Double click. That's actually, we are older generation. We don't much about computers, unfortunately. Maybe we have screen share. Okay, I got it back. Huh? Okay. Share. I think we crossed this part already, didn't we? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next slides. Um, this one, no, no, not this one. Sorry, not this one. Sorry. You make it fully uh, screen. Go for go for slideshow. Yeah. yeah Let me go. Huh? Screen share. No, no, no. Am I on the right track? Again, oh, again no. came out. Share, stone selection, share. Okay. Can, can you see? Yes, no. yes. But it's, it's just, false. Just double, double click. Uh, this one, resume share, huh? Yeah. Okay. Can you share? Can you see now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, good. Full screen, full, full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Just like this one.
Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, we were before the, this, this this picture. We were there. No, no, yeah. So, uh, no, no. Okay. The matrix. I think one or two slides earlier. One or two slides earlier. Okay. Let's go back. This is the desirable yeah, yeah, skin yeah, characteristics. Yes, yes, yes. We have seen that before. Okay. Yes. Good. It's nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you very much. Then, of course, these are the characteristics of stand uh, we like to have: low cross profile, high flexibility, high radial strength, low metallic area, surface area, favorable radiographic properties on fluoroscopy, good trackability, and easy deployment. Now, choosing the stand, selection of stand. Of course, so a bare metal versus drug reading stands. It's no question about using drug stent, which is superior to bare metal stents. <coughs> stent size, stent length. We have to choose the correct stent length, particularly from generally from healthy to healthy. Uh, and stent diameter, we like to choose the distal end of the cor coronary artery diameter for the stent, then of course that at the proximal end. Know your matrix, a large mismatch between proximal and distal vessel, for instance, in left main stem. Bifurcation interventions may happen, but you have to choose that kind of stent that can expand better, particularly in the proximal end. And stent trackability, torches and calcified lesion use a stent which is more trackable, like it used to be Promos element, uh, Resolute Onyx. These are actually very trackable stents. And so key factors are the deliverability, safety, stent thrombosis, et cetera. The tips that are to tell, further tips and tra uh, tricks of stent selection, Longitudinal stent deformation, with particularly with osteal lesion, it more happens with bromous element stent. Of course, I don't want to undermine any companies, but uh, this is a known actually. And strain stress fracture, bench test, testing indicates integrity element and premier platforms being less susceptible to fracture than giants and biometrics. We have to know our, our poly, uh, polymer and drug. There have been a much more dedicated trials with everolimus eluting stents in unprotected left main disease total chronic occlusion and in Tandita, you are again disconnected. What happened today, sir? जन भाई आ स्माइलिंग फेस पीसीआई Actually, I chosen the stents according to the trial, and or that is the uh, that is randomized trial, and according to the whether the patient having and some uh, approval. Especially, I look for the FDA or Japanese approvals, or sometimes I may be chosen the CE, but most of the time I depend on the approval by the FDA or as uh, uh, or Japan FDA approval like that, and the. Now in the new design stand, all of the stand is maybe the good. Even believe me that I have a check angiogram done one of the LED lesion having an BMS stand eight years back. 
in the LED and too long stent. It is the size was 2.75 and the patient is fine and the stent was patent. Only there is 30 to 40 millimeter in stent stenosis. Unfortunately, nowadays company is not bringing the BMS stents. So I think so bigger if the RCA, we know that if the RCA is a big size like 3.5 or 4, you can put a BMS, no doubt, the long term outcome is also good, especially if the patient is not non diabetic. And it is very expensive, it is very cheaper, that is 23,000 taka. So I think so it should be available and some of the condition where we can use the BMS stents. Otherwise, the stent which is available like the Medtronic one, like the Boston one, like the Abbott one, every, or uh, even the Terimo one, these are the good stents, I think. So and also there is some stents coming up in the European stent. There's maybe have been good efficacy, but I, most of the stent that is approved by the FDA, that is a very good stent. So I take the stent according to the, also I use the, the cobalt chromium or like that, and visibility of the stent is a very important factor. So whether the stent visible, so the moment I have, um, actually, I'm listening to the word of the Momino Zaman sir that uh, these stents are the digital left main. Definitely, we have uh, chosen the stent. Those can be expanded more. Usually, most of the stent can be expanded more than if, if the stent is 2.5, you can add 1.5. Very easiest formula. You can, most of the new generation stents, you can add the 1.5. 2.5, you can add the 1.5. If it's 3, then you can add 1.5. So, 3, you can go to the 4.5, no problems. Even Medtronic claim that, or even the Boston claim that uh, they are, they, uh, even Medtronic, most of the Medtronic stand claim that they can go beyond 1.5. So in that case, if there is a disparity, big disparity between the LED and the left main, like LED, sometimes LED is diffuse disease and LED is 2.5. In that case, if you want to expand the stand, because, but uh, in the reality is that the uh, God is not unkind that the proximal LED is less than three millimeter. This is a big term. And God, God is not unkind that let man is less than 3.5. So you can, we, we can uh, say that LED, three millimeter stents, most of the stents, but there is some situation where 2.5 stent that has to be expanded more in the uh, let main. Then I think so we have to assume the stent which are more, um, uh, which can be expanded more. Another thing is that you have to put the stent, the size must be post dilated. Suppose post dilated proximal segment must be the balloon is available in your shelf. Because the lowest post dilation balloon, the port balloon is uh, available is shortest is eight or 10. So you have to be, uh, you have to put two dice stent proximally at least eight or 10. To, if, if, otherwise, there may be some problem with the plaque shifting. And other thing is that in the most of the lab, the uh, stent is available. That is not by the choice for us. It is also choice for the industry, choice for the uh, hospital also. Maybe then the government hospital in ICV do have a lot of the flexibility, but in the private hospital, there is some of the restriction that is according to the choiceability of the stent. You cannot, if you, you are the consultant, you have not right, but there is some restriction by the authority. Suppose in some of the hospitals where I'm working that the, they are choosing the, they are in the shelf only one or two companies, not like that. So in the private sector, there's a big limitation that is um, uh, in the moment John by maybe the different in this well, United Hospital that's a different issue, but what of the hospital, other hospital, there's some restriction same, of the evolutive stand. Same, same uh, in our hospital. Okay, now I, I, I know that it is hospital, and uh, sometimes it, you, you may be the better shape, but in other hospitals, it's but not always possible to actually, it's a fact. Because uh, with which ground you will convince the hospital to take a, uh, seven, six, seven varieties of a state? Because if the company has got uh, the same size, you have got little choice. But I agree with you regarding the use of uh, the bare metal stent, especially four millimeter stent, there is no point to use a drug lutic stent of four millimeter. Bare metal will give the same result. So that is also yes, my concern. That is my, my concern that we should available the BMS uh, in the future, I think. And integrity, we should uh, actually force the Medronic to uh, bring back their integrity 
there is an excellent state yeah and yeah. most yeah. of the company they will not come but metronic yeah. is doing Bishan. business all all the sector so yeah. we will we will just pray, I, I think uh, give them warning why you will not make this available no otherwise this, we this should is, make some pressure on them no this is same applicable to us of vision like already yeah. told that i have a one patient who is having i have put the led in the that is apollo hospital where i working at the time as a visiting consultant 2.52 led pattern and yesterday that i i i i, I told you that the stent i putting the driver in the led and uh, and double stent two stent and it's pattern so this is not that exactly in led we will put the that i am not advertising no, it but, but we have to say that we have to say that, that this stent must be available in the market so i am like talking about the 4 or 3.5 that has to be available four millimeter stent uh, bare metal and dragalutic is the no difference not even why to use this so I, I especially, especially on the rc and lc it's not in led i am forgetting even, about led even 4 millimeter LED is also it's good. a big size vessel. But you can claim that is 4.5. Yes, but you can claim that LED is and uh, that is more instant stenosis and mm -hmm. uh, you can do the drug DS. But I think so RC and LCX. LCX is not a big territory and RCX also is a bigger size than we can extend a PMS, no doubt. So we are really, even in, in Canada, the, um, uh, the insurance company sometimes does not cover the DS and they're putting the BMS system. From Bangladesh, they are going to the Canada. I think this So I put vision stand for okay, okay. Done in left main osteal cell in 2012. Vision stand in the bare bed stand in the left main osteal cell in 2012 because no size in that, that DS 4.5 at the time. But patient is now is the follow up is very, very well size. Well, I, I said yes. four millimeter and above, the, there is no difference between drug looting and bare metal. So we have Thank you, sir. To, yeah, sir. we have to ask yes, the yes. companies. It should be available, and but none of the companies are interested for that because margin is less. The problem is that we have to keep the margin. I, I think I mean I I personally I'll just I will just I I, I give them warning. They if I, uh, recently I am having very scarcity of this bare metal stand. At least metronic I can say because uh, if, it, they, if if they don't. Obey my word, then they will uh, have to pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, thank you, sir. Dr. Tamjit is waiting, sir. Dr. Tamjit. Yeah, Tamjit. Uh, please. Okay. Dr. Tamjit, thank, you. thank you, sir. What was a nice discussion, anyway. Uh, 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 just uh, continuing the rest of the lecture. Uh, yeah. Now we go to think about specific lesions. How do we treat it? So I'm going to show some of my cases here. Uh, how did I treat with the? Why, why did I choose this kind of stents actually? This is a general uh, man with a tortuous coronary anatomy, as you can see, and the CT or distally. Uh, so we had to use a good, good backup uh, with a L1 catheter. I took a swan blue wire, which is my hot workhorse wire, with a fine cross macro catheter, part the wire distally. And we had to pre dilate the entire length of the uh, artery. And then, of course, uh, it's a total. So I had to use three strands actually, one by one 3.26, 3.5, 30, and 3.5, 20, 23, or strands. Why did I choose Orsido? Of course, in Bangladesh, we have to think about money. And the three strands I have to have deployed in one patient is a question of cost. So, comparing to American drug editing strands, is less than half, price is less than half. So, three, and also it is a very uh, uh, deliverable stents where we can cross distally. So these issues are also in, in involved when you use a, a stent, financial issues, and uh, and also good result we obtain with, by this stent, three stents or side of. Now, my second uh, case I'm showing here is a left main distal bifurcational stent, which, which stent did I use? Actually, as you can see, this is a Medina 111 type of distal LM stellations. And I, I did a, use the seven phase XB catheter. So my work was wired as before, so I had blue wires. I took two giant expeditions uh, stents, one in the circumflex and another from left main ostium to distal LED, long stents to have, for areas for post dilatation. And, uh, and I used the technique of decay crush, of course. And I had a good uh, uh, apposition. 
uh, as you can see on the IBUS. Multiversal PCI in a single patient with uh, multiple stenosis and different uh, coronary arteries. Like LED, this patient had a, a distal, long distal LED lesion, subtotal occlusion, and uh, also second place uh, uh, optis marginal bifurcational lesions, and also distal PDA lesions. I can see visualize them. Uh, and now what standard I use? In this LED, it was a long lesion to cover. So we had to use a long stand like 48 millimeter. And I, uh, it was a synergy stand I used from here to there. It's a long 48 millimeter stand. And post that of course. Again, muted. Uh, Amit bhai, you hear me? The same problem. Tamjit bhai, you better use mobile hotspot and you are muted. Tamjit bhai, you are muted. Unmute please. Can you hear me uh, now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. So let's you use the mobile hotspot. Okay. Okay, I don't have the lecture on my mobile. I only have it in my laptop. Okay. Okay. Yes, start. Yes, start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, th so these are the final results uh, of those stents. Actually, when I, mean, I use uh, this was the long stent I used for. Uh, that is the it's energy for the LED. Giant alphines for the second place OM. And for the RCA, as we know, Onyx, which is a very good deliverable stent and very distal vessel, we can use Onyx, we used Onyx there. It's another case with a osteal lesion. And I've chosen a giant stent, expedition stent, which is actually a, why did I choose giants and osteal lesion like this? The reason because uh, giants, I believe has a very good radial strength. It is a, a, a Met, as I said, it is actually both closed and open. That is a hybrid type of uh, structure. So it gives a better radial strength. Again, we cannot hear you. Net is slow there. No, he is out. Is Bodhijan Thai here? Bodhijan Thai? Bodhijan Thai, are you here with us? Reta Thai, can you unmute yourself? Yes, Assalamu Alaikum. I want to ask you a question. Uh, do you have any experience with the stent breakage? And if so, why did it happen? But have you seen uh, any case? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, in my uh, working experience, I never broke a stent uh, in anywhere. Uh, this is actually, I think it is a uh, unfortunate thing for me. But uh, I uh, seen by different presenters by uh, broken stent. Uh, usually this broken stent is usually happened during uh, over uh, size balloon dilatation uh, in a calcified area. This is usual, uh, uh, usually uh, where the uh, stent may become broken. So we have to be very cautious about the dilatation of the uh, a stent, whether it is uh, the actual pressure, atmospheric pressure, not beyond the uh, atmospheric pressure, and also choosing the stent. The undersized stent, if you uh, over dilate it, then there is a chance of breakage of uh, the strut of a stent. 
if uh, uh, we broke a stent there uh, in a led so what we should do we should put another stent uh, within this then uh, we can overcome the situation and uh, regarding uh, can you hear me yes 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 and uh, for stent selection i have a comment that uh, if I, uh, we have a uh, uh, LED lesion, subtotal or total lesion, along with the left main lesion, uh, then we have, uh, uh, or any, any lesion in anywhere, after pre-dilatation, we have to use uh, uh, intracoronary GTN uh, for uh, proper sizing of the, after, after intracoronary GTN, nitrates after a few minutes we can again keep a shot to see the actual size of the vessel uh, when a, uh, a artery is subtotal or totally occluded then the distal to the occlusion usually the size of the vessel we cannot estimate before so after uh, peridilatation we have to use a use sub, uh, uh, intracoronary uh, nitrates. Then again, give a contrast, and then we should assess the actual size of the distal portion of the uh, artery beyond the lesion. Then it uh, 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 most of the time, when we have to uh, put a stent from LED to left main, then it is very helpful and uh, uh, to choose a stent uh, where the uh, mismatching of the stent is less. Uh, I think this is my comment. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes. Doctor, thank you, sir, Dr. Samjit. Samjit yes, the last so, so many interruptions. Thank you very much. Oh, my uh, last internet time. services was poor. So I'm going to the last slide. Uh, before stent selection, proper understanding of coronary lesion is a must mainly for our fellows. Optimal standing technique, regardless of stand type, has been emphasized for treatment success. Modern drug editing stands, as Monimunuzia Unvai was telling, allow the treatment of almost all coronary lesions with excellent acute results and long-term safety. Proper understanding of property of stand will give the extra benefit to the operator for selecting appropriate stand. Thank you for your patience hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Damjit. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, can I can I comment stop, stop, stop uh, another stop sharing. comment? Stop sharing. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. yes uh, actually, the uh, uh, regarding the uh, choice of stent, from my experience, uh, I have very limited experience, not that much experience like uh, Professor Mominud Jaman and uh, Professor Abzalur Rahman. Uh, but in uh, my limited experience, uh, what we are uh, usually using the stent uh, to, uh, to today's or uh, uh, nowadays, that is the uh, Boston Scientific, uh, Medtronic, and uh, the Abbott Vascular mostly. And another one is uh, Orsiro. Orsiro is a very, very good stent. Uh, but uh, less visual visualization, yeah. very, very good trackability, but uh, the radial strength, I don't know what your experience, my experience is radial strength a bit lower than the giants or onyx. Because so, uh, so, yes, thinner. Because uh, at this point, when I uh, put a strength in a calcified lesion or the left main uh, uh, stem lesion, then I never choose Orsiro. In that situation, usually I choose Giants or Onyx for uh, better radial strength. I don't know the, actually in Korea, I saw that the most of the left main cases, they use the Boston scientific uh, stent, uh, but uh, from my experience, it is almost same like Orsiro. The Boston scientific stent are not that much good radial strength. 
like giants or uh, onyx so uh, uh, this is my comment and also for the for the bifurcation relation and uh, for the crossability from uh, within a strain to the side branch i think uh, onyx and giants is better than any other strain thank you very much uh, i i just add something if you have to use multiple strain and overlapping strain choose yeah. a strain where the visualization is very good choose a platinum yeah. strain it's very helpful if you yeah. want to say from ostium to uh, the to the middle of the vessel and you have to place the strain at exactly pinpointly choose a yeah. strain very well visualized that's very helpful yeah, yeah. Take, uh, uh, so one small uh, tip So while putting a stain exact location is preferable to use a cine rather than pure yes it will give a more yes. accurate placement yes and ask the patient to hold the breath because yeah. because of the radial uh, there is a lot of variation so especially if you want to put exactly <coughs> the ostium of the left main uh, preferable to uh, ask the patient to hold the breath and place it in a cine mode Yes. Uh, one, one, one well, I have one about, question. One comment about the uh, yeah. long stent. Must be. The long must stent. Be. No. Long stent. I think uh, if a distal match vessel is 2.25, it is not to prefer a stent of 48 millimeter, where the proximal will be 3.5 or 4. Yes. Distal will be 2.25. There will be there will be gross deformity in the proximal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up to Then, 38 is okay, but for Eight. If you go a uh, distal match, sometimes you compel to match with the two point two five. There is one second also the overlapping. The overlapping side is the place for restenosis. So it is also preferable to place the overlap by cine mode only one millimeter overlapping. The oh. same mechanism here. Hold the breath. Take in the cine mode and as. Less as possible overlap. No, that's fine. But expense expense is a factor. If we put the two standard no, no, expense no. Is factor, no, I understand. If, expense is a result, factor. Yeah, I no, understand. No, I, but two point five stand. You can go one point five. The three point five. It depends upon the what is the length of the lip. What is the diameter of the lady? Any yeah, stand no, like I, the I, new generation of the Medtronic, new generation of the Boston, you can go at least one point five. So it is two point five. Then you can go plus one point five. So three, three point five. No doubt about that. Even the metronic one, you can I go agree. to four. You, you can go to four. It depends upon the left end. If you have an IVAS, if you can estimate that the left end sizes, if the left end size three point five, then you can choose the two point five stand. No problem. Why you will choose the two uh, two stand? You can choose the one stand forty eight millimeter. I will be in favor for that. Because definitely overlapping has an increase in stent stenosis and stent thrombosis. So if I have an IVAS, if I estimate the left main is 3.5 or 4, I can take to the 2.5 stent. No, without an IVAS, 2.75, no problem with that. Sir, uh, and so we must give any question. And smaller, yeah. so if one millimeter up, higher side stent can go 1.5 millimeter up. Is the 2.25 stand? You can can you uh, can you get it more than one millimeter? No, no, no. One point. You can any stand. You can go. Plus. It is it is not the stand sizes. You can go any stand more than 1.5. Note it I'm, is the normal I'm rule talking, of the stand. One two point five plus 1.5. So more you dilate it. Three point five. More more it deform the stand. Now one one five but doesn't differ. It, no, it is, you all, see, all the result shows that no deformation. They have the company as well as the. Uh, and the as company industry. will always say and like that. Also, the also the also the company study shows that. Like that. Nah, also, the study shows that you can go to the 2.5. You can go to 3.5. It depends you can, upon you can the level. The way everything is not if you control of your hand. Some over expansion of the stent may sometimes produce uh, abnormal release of the. Drugs from the coronary stent resulting in subacute thrombosis and restenosis. Exactly. So exactly. over expansion matters should be brought in mind during expansion. Once you over expand it, it's not always at our hand. Sometimes maybe over expand it. So it, it 
may produce sometimes another for expanded will be starts the starts and the sparsing of the starts the drug concentration will be less but third generation stand only third generation can be used onic can be used of onic and synergy you can easily go 1.5 easily easily go the plus of 1.5 the pool must be you go for the run yeah oh. i have one question how common is your strain fracture have you seen i i, I will put in some <laughs> because i in <laughs> one is one that one is the one yeah i have got a sir, sir. strain fracture in two way sir i want the acute you strain. open your uh, headphones sir please do. Uh, yes yes eric please sir sound yes audible audible where yes, yes. am i audible yes sir yes sir actually strain fracture can happen in two way one is the acute strain fracture when it happen during procedure other one is the old patient when the patient <coughs> is a, okay okay uh, 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 post strain the post strain usually it is uh, uh, who is there oh, i'm sharing no, i'm uh, just uh, i'm sharing one uh, case you, here This Thank is you. a. I mean, uh, this stent yes. was put two years back, and <laughs> it came with a acute strain thrombosis. And you can clearly see here stent uh, fracture yes, grade right. four. See, yes, yes. This is one. Uh, uh, so, so uh, that I want to add with that moment, Javan Bai, that acute at sometimes the in the vessel where there is a tosswas or there is a kinking, this portion is stent will be breakage. So we have to careful about that. Exactly, this is the best example. This is a beautiful example that this is a uh, this is a migrant breeze or there is some kinking of the stent and this portion usually stent fracture. This is cause of the due to the coronary anatomy, and the stent is fracture. So it is very. What kind of stent you have put? It is an. This is a. I, I think so. You have put it is an. Uh, uh, three into forty-eight mm of Giants expedition. Giants, yes. Giants. So clear, you can clearly see a stent fracture. Okay, yeah, so so so. So. so in this cases in this segment tosswas and where there is a kinking in this stent giants is not a good stent you have to choose the more flexible stent like the metronic stent here also on excess and I, 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 can you see that can you fix it up it is also not in the same alignment it is no. not in the same alignment yes. now fracture and yes, yes. actually fracture and some uh, dislodgement actually there is no. you can see that so, this is so a there is a possibilities fracture. possibilities of something like aneurysm or something that actually the no, no 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 yeah, this is a clear picture this is a complete uh, stent fracture it's temporary right, it's a right. you are not complete, showing complete. A, no this is not an aneurysm it's a fracture the, the, and you can see this fracture is at the level of the angulation of the coronary artery yeah. Yeah, is, that is uh, that i said there, it can be happen in the acute situation or in the chronic situation especially where there is a acute bend that acts as a hinge that a place may be the uh, site for the uh, fracture but in acute it is mostly because of over dilatation over over dilatation and 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 and, and it usually in the calcific lesion it happen and that happened yes. uh, in one case with my case I, i i cannot explain how it happened complete separation in the proximal led so i had to uh, breeze it with another uh, another stent Uh, to cover the whole leg i had to but, uh, but i so but i want to say on a calcivate vessel so i had to put another strain later on but i want to say dr orun's picture this one is should be in the museum should be in yes. the museum because yeah. this is something i have never seen before <laughs> I mean, this is the alignment is so different it's very different alignment indeed <laughs> no no this this case is very interesting if i present some day this uh, patient had a uh, uh, fracture you, okay uh, you will put you, it can you make a uh, uh, city ngo of this patient Because I am in doubt that the distal yes. segment could be in the aneurysmal segment. No, no so problem. Not yeah. been seen distally. Yeah. LED is not seen anyway before uh, after the stent. So how it dislodged malaligned like this? No, no, not really malaligned. There should be space. No, no, no. there should there be. Space. Is, oh, is, I, I see. You have done no, it, no? no? Yeah. Oh. Because this patient uh, came with a uh, uh, acute uh, stent thrombosis with a uh, stabi. So put another stain in this patient. It's a, a wonderful job. Yes. Yeah. Rewiring was an excellent. <laughs> rewiring was a challenge. Yeah. Oh, Mamu Nujan Bai. Ah. Can we put this case in the BIT meeting? Ah. Yes. 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 Can I give some history? 
Okay, no, no. Yeah. Can you show me the check and jigram? No, no. Keep, it, keep, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. Musky, don't, dis don't yeah. disclose yeah. it. Yeah. Don't disclose <laughs> it. Let it be in a, in a okay. big meeting. So put it in the coming BIT meeting, in yeah, the master city sure. presentation. Okay. Yeah. okay. If Mohammed sure. Zawad is agree, because yeah. he is the yes, yes. important board member. Most important board member. Uh, we don't know the full story because Arun put three stands at three times and it begs three times. Isn't it, Arun? Yeah. <laughs> That's very interesting. Tell me something. I know the whole story. That's yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, I think it is 11 20. At your current uh, position, sir. Do you hear me, sir? Friday. That's why. At your current position, sir. Do you hear me, sir? Yes. Thank you. I I I have simple simple question for the uh, fellows. Yeah. Now can I ask one more question? Before, Sorry. Before, uh, choosing oh. the just one question, one more yeah. uh, Choosing the stand. One thing, Doctor uh, Professor Abdul Sir say trials, uh, anything, but fellows do not uh, go for the trials. So you choosing the stand is the open cell or start size or drug materials. Well, how will you, uh, fellows choose the stand? Simple is three, two to three points for the fellows Excellent. because. Fellows are looking for this, yeah. When the fellows are doing the cases, actually, they are uh, patients <coughs> to, first of all, they have to think about the financial implication of the procedure, number one. Actually, they don't, uh, maybe they don't like to choose a costly stent, number one, but uh, it is uh, better for them to go for a branded stent, particularly if it is a, a FDA approved one. There are some cheaper ones, some middle range one and some costly ones as well. Then another thing is important that the configuration of the vessel, if there is a major side branch, they should, uh, and they are crossovering the major side branch, they should uh, choose a stand which has an open cell design, which like to unlikely to gel the side branch. And if they need to recross the side branch, it will be relatively easy. And if they need to put a second stand as a bailout procedure, that might be easy as well. And the, uh, Another thing, I, would, uh, I think uh, Dr. Tamjid has not mentioned in his lecture, though here it's very, there is a tapered stent available in the market now. The yes. half millimeter difference between the proximal and the distal one. It's a factory made tapered stent, which is also- Differential balloon. Yeah, actually- Differential this, balloon. This is yeah. Shahjanan, uh, Shahjanan has got one. Yeah. So uh, this, uh, this type of stand we can choose for a tapered vessel when there is a mismatch between the proximal and the distal diameters. And number and another thing is the location of the stand placement. If we are choosing the austere location, we have to go for a very good radial strength. So these are the things we need to keep in mind. And another thing, uh, as the Abdul sir has emphasized that the, uh, the, the post dilatation limit, we have to be very aware of particularly in the left main or proximal vessel situation. So, and as Momini Jaman has, has said that it is better not to put a less than three millimeter stent in the left main locations. Uh, I, I would uh, uh, just, uh, the, in the evolution of the stent, uh, when we were starting the, uh, uh, our uh, journey, at that time, there was one lady pathologist named Renu Bhirmani and she used to publish a lot oh, of articles. Still, very still she is there. Using she's still there. <laughs> articles that this stent is better, drug eluting is better. Someday later, she stayed, uh, said the, the, the bare metal one is better. It was creates a lot of confusion. And it is uh, uh, speculated that, uh, that she had some uh, deal with the stent companies. And that influenced her uh, publications as well. So nowadays, we are free from her publications. We are uh, getting the. Uh, randomized trial, but still the randomized trials are sponsored in majority by the stand company. So we don't, we should not be carried away by the results of the uh, randomized control trial. I would like to ask a question to Mamir Jamal, sir, that you uh, implant a lot of cipher stands uh, from the very beginning of your career to until uh, very maybe <coughs> So why this stand is a very good stand, short term and long term uh, result was quite good. But why this stand was withdrawn from the market? We don't have a real explanation. In, in, fact, in, in, in fact, it was always the comparison. There are certain uh, complications coming up with the cipher that was long term result of cipher was not 
uh, decent, like uh, microaneurysm, stained, late, very late stain thrombosis. These are the uh, things that is uh, coming up with the cipher. We don't know about uh, the present third generation stain, what it will uh, be after 10 years, because cipher updated uh, the latest result, it came after 10 years. So we have got not yet been uh, the, the similar data of cipher, but but the not only this, there are other issues like cipher starts was very uh, the it is the biggest than any other uh, contemporary state. It is 150 micro. Yes. So it's a very robust state. It's very difficult to track. Not all lesion is suitable for that. But in one way, still people patient are coming with uh, the old cipher. Uh, really, I found a patient having very late stent thrombosis. Uh, I can count it in hand that uh, some came with microaneurysm, uh, uh, and 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 uh, some came with uh, very late stent restenosis. So this can be uh, no. the the late outcome of <coughs> all medical. No, no. Uh, uh, Mohindi bhai, I, I, better I want to ask one thing. Better stent is available. That's why cipher has gone out. No, yeah. Jawan bhai, uh, the cipher has gone because of the stent thrombosis, stent thrombosis. That is latest stent thrombosis and the aneurysm, not in stent stenosis. Because cipher is a stent that has an NT proliferative action is highest. So that is this two region. Another one system. point I would to add the. Um, I I, I agree not, with this, Abzal. Yes. Abzal in Bangladesh. I have uh, uh, implanted more than 3,000 stent. How many of cipher stent came to you for stent thrombosis? But problem is that. But this problem, platform. But problem is that. Problem is that you have no definite data. No, 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 no. In your experience, because we people are doing intervention. <coughs> how many right. of this patient came to you with cipher stent thrombosis? Tell me. No. Can no, anybody but, say? But real data shows that. And no, the other no, thing is that, that, that data is like this. No, no. This no, is no. also fabricated. Means. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. Water, no, no, no. Absolutely. Yeah, this is let, me, let me two point. Khaled Moshin, what, what told that we don't believe on the randomized trial, but still we are working on the randomized trial. We're multi center randomized trial. We have to be, we have to believe on that. Otherwise, we cannot trust on the drugs, trust on the medicine, or like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Number two, number two, taper and taper stand. There is no benefit of the taper stand. Why is taper stand? Because if the state is 2.5, you can expand proximally. Enough. Why you so taper distance is not advocating by the company. There is only one company that is because this will be the mistranslated to the uh, fellows. So nowadays taper distance is not the magic stem. It, it may be the uh, suitable. Actually, what do you think about the drug? Cypher had a serulimus drug. Same which is very is excellent the, drug. Excellent drug. But uh, maybe excellent drug. But thing is that only there. The... I think only it's an operator choice because the cipher is not not that easily trackable state. Yeah. Like nowadays, the third generation, anyone can track. So, but cipher is really robust state. And all this uh, kissing complex lesion is coming up now because of the development of design of the state. With the cipher, you cannot do uh, all this complex procedure like. DK crash or double stent stenting. This is very difficult. That, that's but fine. This difficult has been but overcome. Cipher development of the newer generation. That's, that's why cipher has gone up. No, 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 not really cipher. Cipher, that's one point, but major point is that the polymer. The polymer of the cipher yeah, is the most helpful. That is the most important, not the drug. It is the polymer. It is the polymer coating that is the most important. For that cipher has other one. Uh, yes, sir. Other one is that all the company has got a second generation stain in hand, except the Cordis. They didn't have. They started one. Uh, they started one, but in the middle of the trial, it proved that it it will not work. So that's why they are late. By this time, Boston came out with their second generation from the Texas. So they took the market. But Cypher, if Cypher came out with the, their second generation codice, they brought the one uh, company, uh, I forgot his name. They have a trial, but it didn't prove that it is better.
cipher select and that's why but, they are out of business otherwise god is did the uh, leader in in, in dragolytic stain can i add something vadhuthai in this uh, yeah, hot sure. debate <laughs> the in this hot debate that what i can say that that in the generations what we are telling about that the newer generation every stand companies are trying to make it much more with a more radial strength but with less metal is yes. that true? less metal Polymeral. so metal Change. itself is not very good because it's homogenic and also it sometimes it's also even what you say that even renu virvani may not be because i wanted to say that one but khalid bhai has told these things i like renu virvani because four steps of stem and regulating stands uh, pathophysiology yes she has described first and this is good that new proliferation and the new atherosclerosis and all these things actually leads to stent thrombosis or stenosis like this but this thicker stents thicker things like even for that for that reason the bio absorbable stents like absorb or something like this has been eliminated because of the ghost you study because because of the thicker because it is thicker so thicker stands are now eliminating gradually from our generation of stands so is is not that acceptable with good radial strength obviously we need a good radial strength also like onyx has got a good radial strength also but it's a thinner strand so and Two also you are, using, you are using platinum coat there you are using some 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 sort of elements there so these are the things that the nanotechnology has been improved so that you can put more metal more metal strength but the microns will be less the microns will be less and it will make the thing is metal free ultimately we have seen the future in the bioreservable stand when i put uh, my small study of 100 absorb in my country but after that 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 i have seen my five stands came back i have been so much disappointed because this was this is the thing i want to make the the coronaries metal free but you couldn't make it i think the the, the next in future it will come up coming again up. yeah it will come up. it will come again acha i want to put in something because we are talking about bioabsorbable and so on but recent studies have shown there is not much difference between bioabsorbable polymer and that not Really, a uh, bioabsorbable polymer. The outcome is same, and also, onyx will supposed to have bioabsorbable polymer, and so it is supposed to have uh, less chance if we stop the dual antiplatelet prematurely. But uh, a recent one recent study has shown uh, silanke is doing better than uh, onyx after if we uh, stop by one month. And no, no, it's a, it's a, it's what is why it's a durable polymer and the bioabsorbable polymer. Durable yeah. polymer doesn't mean that that it has got both hydrophobic and hydrophilic polymer inside. But a a death. That, that one. That, that, that going... polymer. That polymer is very very standard polymer. And yeah. the, and Onyx One trial, Onyx One clear study, and the global yeah, study. It's also doing that. So FDA has approved Onyx for one month DAPT. Uh, but a recent comparison of our trial, I uh, just forgot the name, that has peculiarly has shown that after stopping the dual antiplatelet after one month, Sinaki has the better result than Onyx. Onyx has more stem thrombosis. It was again, again comes uh, again comes the uh, legends words that uh, that which one is uh, represented by the by the or sponsored by the company itself? Or which one is the RCT uh, blind study? Yeah, that's the problem. Check out <laughs> problem. We don't I know think, actually. I think all these things we people are uh, less interested because nobody in this platform we dare to stop dual antiplatelet by within yeah. one month. Yeah, nobody. That's true. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. So so this is we have uh, we have, we have the the long time. not a randomized trial. Nobody so wants to be bullied by the patient party. Common thing. If no no harm, why to not to use this? if the patient has got say platelet count low or uh, some, some surgery, other uh, surgery. Uh, surgery then surgery. you can take a chance yes sir otherwise some there is surgery. no heroism in using one yeah. month dapt and stop it yes yeah. sir because many so of this well antiplatelet i am scared about that you, you know the the term resistance of this drug yeah. so if one and if it is resistant definitely it has got some role in Stent thrombosis, stent restenosis. That's all. Well, maybe we are seeing.
very less number of re stenosis yeah but dr mundi they are they are just clever enough they are telling sapt but they are giving presugrel or ticagrel ha uh, uh. ticagrel they are not giving clopidogrel because they know that the resistance is there so they are telling okay cpt but with presugrel or ticagrel even, even after that so this after you are getting that, a higher are, antiplatelet drug there after that they are on aspirin aspirin has also, also resistance they are eliminating there aspirin they are, they are not they are not telling that aspirin has no role because it the come, now coming is like this that you will if you go for acpt then go for the p2y12 inhibitor not the aspirin itself Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Khali ko jaman bhai, any comments? Sir, Khali ko jaman. Both are two to... brilliant presenter here. Here, uh, we learn a lot from their lectures. Uh, my question is one uh, to Dr. Tamjit bhai or any uh, panelist here. One thing is that to deal with the osteolesion, where there is high chance of elastic recoil as well as re-stenosis, the closed cell design stands are more preferred than the open cell design. To provide more radial strength, is there any closed cell design stand in our country available? All the stand is uh, yeah, yeah, in case yeah, of it used to be to deal with either radial steel or arterial steel or radial steel. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kalaga yeah. Zaman. Uh, we used to use cipher, which was a closed cell design initially, but uh, it is has more radial uh, st st strength. But the problem is the platform. You know, the platform we cannot expand too much with cipher. So even uh, it was traditionally we used to cipher for the osteal left main or osteal disease because of its radial strength. That it has been taken away from the market. Now we have new stents which are actually more or less safe. You can use any of the stents if it is an open cell design, but the radial strength is preserved to some some extent. Particularly the other your uh, onyx, which is a big bigger diameter of particular left main disease osteal lesion. Or you can use a uh, synergy. Synergy has a very good radial strength too. Very good, and uh, and obviously uh, uh, other one is giants. Giants, yeah. Giants, hybrid designs. Yeah, I think I think yeah. I think, I think, I think can a combination I... of both uh, open and co uh, closed cell. It is a more okay. uh, but. Uh, Uh, newer generation stand we do hardly have any problem with the uh, osteal disease can i tell something khalig jaman bhai because uh, only not only the it is all, uh, de it depends on the open cell and closed cell but at the same time it depends on the connector synergy has multiple connector they have used three connectors then rather than two connectors before so the multiple yeah. connectors means it okay, will have yeah. least least chance for recoil and more chance more, uh, more you have the affinity for ex more expansion You will have that uh, that uh, that audacity to expand more. Thickness is always a factor. Either more thinner, few advantages, few disadvantages. More thicker, few advantages and few disadvantages. Is there any cutoff point? In our setting, the we see the Orsi has got the thinnest uh, uh, start, and the BVS uh, has got the more thicker starts. So, which should we prefer? Or is there any cutoff point below which we should not use, or above this we should not prefer? Thinner stents means easy deliverability. It becomes so easy yeah. to deliver the stent. Yeah. But it's uh, on its deliver. yes, and with the but the polymer in the in the only I have shown you earlier the polymer of the uh, this uh, stent has got a circumferential polymer. It's not a labdominal polymer. So more polymer, more chance of thrombogenicity. So that's another issue we have to think about. And also drugs. I serolimus. I believe still is a very good drug, though it's no longer used other than uh, this uh, uh, Swiss stent. Uh, uh, but uh, but I believe the drug is still very good. But they are using serolimus most of the stents, except onis, which they are using in jotolimus. Yes. Serolimus as a drug, I have a, still have fascination for that drug. Maybe the platform has old backdated cipher, but the drug itself is very good. I don't Thank know anything comment from Amnangan bhai and uh, Abdul bhai about the serum now, drug uh, because a uh, long discussion we just stop now yes. uh yes, uh, yes. Sir, any, any comments La last comment what is sir serum has more allergic reaction it's more related with uh, aneurysmal dilatation and other things okay. that's the problem i have seen one case where after putting a, a dialytic stent the patient had severe systemic allergy and Has to go abroad, and they have found out actually it is because of the multiple drug eluting 
uh, stand. That's he. That's why he's having that. And he's lucky enough that he survived the allergic episodes, the acute episodes, and there was no stent thrombosis because uh, there was a high chance of having that. And the enzymal dilatation that's related to cellular mass is also related to the polymer as well. Thicker yeah, that. Uh, the way, this is called Coney syndrome. That uh, Coney syndrome is very much. Uh, no, no, no. At the same time, also drug eluting in drug eluting stands also. So I don't call this syndrome is separate thing. No, the, no, this is stand related with the polymer and the hypersensitivity reaction is there in their coronary arteries. And Coney syndrome. Look, your case is there. No allergic reaction, this case. But the patient is having severe hypotension. Yeah. That's a problem. Today we have a very lively discussion about the stands, the wires, and everything. Uh, my young fellows, one thing is that what everybody is saying. Everybody is saying that you have to work with a few guide wires. Be very familiar with what you are using. Make it your friend. Treat the wire like your wife or girlfriend, if you think. Treat it with delicacy, with respect, and with love. You will get the result. You will get the satisfaction, definitely. And whenever you are using the stand, be careful. What I want to say, once somebody was asking Nietzsche, the German philosopher, how do you propose to go to a fiancé? He said, yes, go there. Go there take a bundle of roses, but take also your whip so that you can dictate what you want. Whenever you are choosing a stand for a particular reason, look at the relation. Look what you want to have with it. Do you want to have a side branch axis very well? Do you want to have very good radial stand? Do you want a very trackable stand which will go through a very uh, calcified lesion or tortuous vessel? Do you want to have uh, use it in an ostium? If you want to use it in ostium, use a very well visualized stand. Otherwise, you can't be sure whether you are putting it at the right place. If you want to go through a tortuous stand, choose something, uh, the individual family group, that you can track it very well. Do it. Use the wire as such. If you want to track a stand through a calcified area, Use an extra support wire that will be very helpful. All these things you gain with experience and that will serve you well. And we do hope what we have learned in five years, 10 years, 15 years, you will be learning it in one year, two years, three years, or five years. You can do that because you have the facilities, you have the facilitators. Our teachers were actually learning along with us. Professor Sifi Rahman started in, in this country, and we have started as the third person. The second person was the Eastern person. We, as the medical officer, were the third person. We all were learning together. But now you have the learned facilitators, the mentors who are here to help you. Learn from them, learn from us, learn from these lectures, and be victorious. We serve this nation. That is our aim. That is the aim of IPDI. Mostly. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, participants, and also respective faculties. Monu Jaman, sir, Professor Abdul Rahman, Dr. Sajid Rahman, Khalikul Jaman, Nikhil Mehta, sir. Thanks, everybody, at the midnight along with us. Our next class on Thursday at the same time, next at this 19th uh, November, technician course for the courses for the technician and nurses. I think all the panelists will be there. They, they encourage the, our technicians and nurses to attain themselves as logically and uh, theoretically. And after that, next uh, Thursday on 26th, we start STMI catalepsis. Dr. Mahmoudullah Firoz will talk on ECG localization culprit artery. It is the most important topics for the fellows, how to uh, di um, uh, diagnose the culprit artery by the ECG. Okay, until then, goodbye. Thank you, Beximco Pharma, for last five months with us. And they are doing a lot at midnight, the working with us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Stay safe and take care. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, sir.
thank you tamjid bhai thank you very much awake thank you thank you dr mohsin and sir bhai thank you and uh, ipd organizers thank you all participants thank you thank you bhai thank you thank you thank you mohsin sir culture thai salam